Are you ready for your window shoppers to become paying customers? Equity Commerce is here to make that happen. We can help you automatically show the exact product visitors saw but didn't purchase on your site wherever they go on Facebook and Instagram using this magic called dynamic Facebook retargeting. To show these ads to your prospects today, sign up in your Equid Control Panel in the Marketing section and look for the Facebook Remarketing app. This is fully integrated into Equid and Facebook and so simple and effective you'll wonder why you hadn't done this sooner. Okay, back to the show. This is the Equid E-Commerce Show with your host, Jesse Ness, along with Richard Ote. Richie, happy Friday. Happy Friday. It's not so sunny as it usually is, but uh, we'll make it a bright day. How about that? Well, I like it. Our personalities will <laughs> brighten the day or something. I don't know. <laughs> that's, that's, a little, that's a little cheesy, but hey, we've been, uh, we've been kind of brain overload from social media marketing world. Uh, so like it's been all e-commerce, all um, social media, just traffic and all sorts of crazy stuff. So like I'm ready to... <laughs> I'm ready to apply a lot of these things, and I, I have all these nice little tips and tricks to share over the next few pods when appropriate. I don't want to do a brain dump on the podcast, but um, but yeah, awesome, awesome stuff. So I'm excited. We heard uh, so we had a Pat Flynn event for people that know him, who wrote the book Will It Fly. Uh, that was awesome. Getting to network, another uh, podcaster, yeah, another podcaster, some other podcasters. Uh, so I had never met Molly Pittman or Ralph Burns. Uh, they both did their own, um, uh, whatever you call them, like breakout sessions at that and just really just really good stuff about chat bots and Facebook ads. And um, so I'll be sharing that in the future. So, man, it was good. So I'm, I'm ready to talk more, e- more e-commerce, more online marketing today. Uh, and I think, you know, like last week, this is what our favorite. This is the reason we do this is that we love talking to merchants. Uh, about their business and you know how, trying to help them and seeing how, what they're what they're doing. So we get to, we get to do another one today, Rich. Yeah, it's good. And not only not only do we get to talk to a merchant today, but we get to talk to a merchant that actually has not only not only listens to the Equity e commerce show, but it sounds as if he's listened to them all. So we'll ask him if what's been his favorite one so far. But uh, let's go ahead and bring him on. All right, Billy Miller, welcome to the show. No, well, thank you. Thanks, Jesse. All right. So, Billy, what is the? Let's let's start with your uh, website. What what site do you own? What business do you own? Um, it's themillermachine.com, and I sell. I manufacture and sell. A, a triangle machine and a finger cymbal machine uh, that are used in for for, for drummers and percussionists. Um, these two machines are mainly uh, used in theater pit work for um, you know musical theater shows that are done all over the country. That's awesome. That's that's another yeah. reason why we love, <laughs> we we're super excited to talk to you because. I mean, it'd be really hard to find a smaller niche, I would think. Yeah. You know, like, uh, yeah. And we love niches, right? Yeah. The, the niches or the riches are in the niches. So yeah. Yeah. What, got you, what got you started with this? Did, I mean, did you just all of a sudden decide they needed this or had you been, well, had you been working in orchestras before? Yeah, it was, it was, I, it was something that I needed. So um, we live in Seattle now, but, but before that we were in uh, New York City for about 18 years and I was playing drums and percussion for Broadway shows and it was a show that I did back in 2001 where it was a it was a multiple setup so I had drum set and timpani and mallets and all these things and I had to go from like a snare drum to the timpani to play a triangle and uh, I didn't want to hit it with the stick because it's it's not a great sound and I thought well I really need to come up with something a way to play this triangle that I can hit, that, that it can be with a beater, and the beater can be mounted so I don't have to look for it and pick it up and play. So it was this show, Follies, back in 2001, where I, I did the original design, um, which is different than how it is now, but that was, that was, the, that was where it came from, and that was you know the, the beginning of the whole thing. Got it. Wow. Uh, I mean, I think that's awesome for everybody listening. So you know, the first part of that is that you're solving your own problem. You realized, yeah. you know, as like I say, I, I'm laughing a little bit because it's so obscure. Like I, at this particular time, I need to play a triangle 
and <laughs> <laughs> I need to find the yeah, thing to hit it with. And I don't I, want to use my stick. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so I need to mount that. Like, but that just shows also too, uh, to Jesse's point, they're solving your own problem. But what what was the first step when you started to do this? Did you um, w- did you think? You, you weren't at all thinking about the business yet, right? This was a, no, I'm no, just solving all. my own problem. Yeah, exactly. And and it so I solved it for that show, and I, I, I used it a little bit here and there. Um, but it wasn't until in 2003 where I started getting some interest from some of the people. So when you're playing a Broadway show, you have – Let's say I take I take off the take off for the night. I have a sub. I have somebody come in and play the show, or I have friends come in and watch me play, and they would see this machine and like, wow, that's really interesting, <laughs> you know. And then they there was a little bit of interest. Um, so so for the first version of it, uh, I ended up I I still have the list of of the ten people that have them. Um, I sold them this machine. Uh, that this it was like between 20, 2003 and 2005 and at that point i'm like oh wow there's something here people are interested and then it, at that point i actually redesigned it it was basically the same concept but i had to make it it just was a very crude version of it so i'm like okay i really need to sort of up the game redesign it make it something that i feel like i could sell you know throughout the country uh, and be happy with that. So that was that evolution. Then I came up, you know, basically um, from 2005 when I redesigned it, 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 it's sort of the version that it is now. That's perfect. So, I mean, you're literally just the, you know, uh, I mean, you lived in New York, so you're not tinkering in your garage. I mean, I, I realize that's, that's not how it works, <laughs> yeah. but sort of like a garage tinkerer where like, yeah. hey, I need this and I'm going to try to build it. And, you know, like yeah. maybe there's some wood and some duct tape at first, but, you know, like you made, I know well, there wasn't, but. <laughs> well, no, but no, you say uh, it, it was made out of wood. Okay. You yeah. <laughs> and, it, and it was made out of pieces of wood and some other found parts here and there. Um, so, yeah, it was pretty crude. Uh but it, you know, it sort of, it did what it needed to do and it, and it, and the concept was there. I just needed to refine it. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's, so. that's great. And you weren't, you know, yeah, there's a couple of years here where you weren't thinking this is the, this is the business this, that I'm building. This is just, I need to play a triangle, triangle and a finger <laughs> <Yeah>. symbol <laughs> and right. other people see it. So that's the perfect way to yeah. start a product. Yeah. Yeah. And so at what point, what did you say? I noticed you said something there. I can't remember exactly. Was it like 10, 13 customers, something like that? You started to realize, hey, other people, other yeah. people might be interested in this. Well, it was the, it was that first version that I did. I, I sold 10 of them. Um, and then, yes, at that point, I'm like, wow, that's kind of interesting. You know, it's, there seems to be interest. And um, at that point, it was like, I need to re- not redesign it, but, but, you know, make it, make it something that I could sell, uh, that I would feel comfortable selling to other people, just not sort of my circle of friends uh, sure. that were in in the city. So, yeah. Do, do you have, is there some sort of a forum or association where you could start to get feedback on that? Or how did you get that process started to get the word out other than people just seeing you? That it was it was basically just that way. It was it was through the the theater stuff um, that you know it got to the point where some of the rental houses in the city were they were they were buying them from me, and then when it, when a, a a show went out, they would send one of these triangle machines with that show, so it would be part of the setup, and it just started getting out sort of through that way. I never really. There wasn't really any advertising. There really wasn't anything else at that point. It was basically just sort of word of mouth through guys uh, in New York City. Oh, and one other thing. I did approach. There was a drum shop there, um, the Drummer's World, with uh, Barry, a good friend of mine. I, I went and said, Barry, you know, what do you, do you, would you be willing to sell this thing? He's like, I don't know. Throw, you know, he set it up on the floor. Um, and that actually helped a lot, too. So people that were just – even people that were coming out, you know – uh, from outside the U.S. would come and see this thing, and and that I think that helped also. And and so that store, Drummer's World, is that kind of a, like a, a the mecca of 
you know, <laughs> the, the, the musical and orchestra world or, or is it just well, a, you know, I'm not aware of it from living yeah. in San Diego. Well, it was, it, it's no longer there. He still has an online store, okay. but it was, it was, it was like the Mecca for the drummers and okay. percussionists, like people from all over the world. If they came to New York, they would go see Barry and, and go to drummer's world and see what he had because he had all these very unique things. Um, and you know, he was like the only person that had that. So you could, okay. you could, you could see this stuff and, and he was such a cool guy, <laughs> you know, we just go hang out and chat and, and see people. And, uh, it was, you know, it was a place to hang out also. Yeah. So, yeah. so, so did you start to see once that happened that people, potentially wanted to use this in a different way now i'm just making something up but maybe you're playing uh, it's a musical and it's mary poppins and you need it to bing at this one particular time and it's made for that for yeah. solving your purpose but did you start to see uh once it got on the floor that people would use the same product in a different unique way or what 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 did you know a, a little bit yeah a little bit but mainly you know, it, it mainly is sort of for that theater world. Um, people use it in smaller percussion setups, maybe, um, you know, small groups, maybe percussion ensembles and things like that. Um, but that it, it, it's sort of, yeah, it's kind of, it's intent was really for, for the theater stuff. I, I have, however, uh, I got a call from an, another company, a bigger company to design a new product, um, which I did in, in 2017. That, and that one is geared more towards sort of orchestral, symphonic chamber groups. It has um, lots of different adjustments on it than the, than the original machine does. But so that, you know, the, the net is wider, but it, the net's not going to be super wide, I think, for this, you know, as, we, as you'd mentioned before, because it, it is that sort of that small niche um, of people that use it. Yeah, well, the the good thing is, I'm sure there's not just orchestras in America, <laughs> right? Yes, uh, yeah, yeah. There's there's yeah. plenty of them all. If, you, if yeah. once you get the word out, so going online right. is a good thing. At, at what point did you start to to look into doing the online space? Well, I you know I did it originally through um, the Apple app uh, iWeb. I set up a little website, um, and I got you know a handful of orders. Uh, now, and then iWeb. What what year are we talking that, about here? This is this is going back. I, I'm I'm aware of it, but you know that's that's old yeah, school. It was, it was part of iLife, which was like photos and um, iMovie and iWeb. And I can't even remember how long ago that was. I mean, I could look it up, but I even have like I even have the original website. I even have like screen grabs that I did of the original website. But that would have been like you know, 2007 8 ish or something like that or say yeah definitely yeah going b- back that far yeah um and that's yeah you, i mean you I, got I, started that's, that's the most important thing <laughs> well that was yeah that was the thing yeah i mean I, I got something up it was just a single page um i don't even remember i mean it was probably just through paypal at the time um but yeah that was the start of it but it wasn't really so so the, the whole new york stuff i I could I could sort of dabble in it, but you know we had a tiny apartment. It was a 550 square foot apartment. I couldn't really do too much there. Uh, uh, when we had eventually we had kids, I had to move all my equipment out to my brother's in Red Hook, and that was a like a 45 minute subway ride. So to be able to 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 do this job full time, I I just wasn't able to because I was playing shows. I was you know taking care of the kids, doing all the things that we had to do. Um, so it really wasn't the full time thing until we got here in Seattle, which has been about five years. Okay. So once we got out here, I was able to set up a shop down in the in the basement, and actually, you know, make these things in larger quantities and look at, you know, more advertising or just ways to to increase the sales. Uh, and then I had that opportunity to to make that new machine as well, um, which I would never have been able to do if I was if I was still in New York. So that was also kind of an added bonus, um, of, of moving to Seattle. Got it. So about, about five years ago, you were starting to, you know, there's kids, you're bouncing, hitting the walls in a 550 (laughs) square foot apartment, time to, time to move to a house. And now you got your real tinkerer workshop in the basement set up and then it's time to, to get a little bit bigger. 
So yeah. yeah, I love it. I love it. And then it also helped you improve your product too. So that's, that's important. Yes, very much so. Very much. Yeah. Which was, which I was very happy about. Cause I was, you know, I was always like, Oh, I really need to do this or I wanted to change that. But it, it was just too hard. It was just a matter of, you know, keeping up with the sales, just getting them, you know, yeah, getting them, getting them out the door. You got to, you have to pack and ship and get stuff to the post office, right? Like that's, yeah, yeah. that's the part of the grind. So now, and when you yeah. moved moved to Seattle, is that the time you, you know, kind of took the website and the online presence into a, you know, the next level, or, you know, well, it it, it was this, it was well, it was the start of, um, I I did switch, so I I I'm trying to remember what I was using up until, I can't, well, I, I guess I started using this this app called Rapid Weaver to build the site, and I was using uh, Cartloom as my e-commerce. That was. 2015 through 28 through uh, like October of last year. So that's what I was using that sort of helped bring me up to another level. Um, You know, as I was sort of developing this other product, there was so many things going on. And then we started talking uh, about this road trip, which I guess was, (laughs) which is, which was kind of the impetus to, to, to look, to, to come up with, to end up using uh, Equid, which is what I started using, um, switching from Cartloom to Equid last October. All right. Which is which is sort of what, um, you know, I kind of feel like has has uh, allowed me to expand even greater in terms of all this other stuff, and also do this trip uh, that we've got coming up. Awesome. So we'll we'll get get back to the trip in a second. So yeah. you were you'd had. You know, several years really with rapid weaver and that was your that was your cms and that's not yeah. a, not a common one but i mean i've heard of it um you know yeah. so i'm actually i i definitely want to take a look at it now that you know we'll be uh yeah. <laughs> we'll be linking all the rapid weaver articles to this uh blog so people can check it out so sure so yeah you used rapid weaver and then uh found and now now did what was good about rapid weaver to just kind of like somebody recommended to you and that's where you started you know how did you well, end up there yeah it was well it, it it's an apple based uh software and, okay. and since i use since i use max max and it's also it, it, it's not a subscription um okay program and i can create it, it was sort of i can i could build what i wanted to build i didn't have to use a template I can, it, it lives on the computer. I don't have to like, like all the, you know, WordPress and those other apps, they're all sort of, uh, cloud-based and I wanted something that I could have on my computer and I could upload and I can jigger with it, you know, which is, which I do all the time, okay. you know, the changing thing. And, and, it, you know, I just found it an easy, an easy platform for me to work on. No, that, that's good. I mean, I, I always like to find out what, what else is out there. We work on so many platforms and, uh, yeah, you know, a lot of people do kind of stick with the the usual suspects, but um, no, good to hear that Rapid Weaver worked really well for you, and um, yeah. you know, and I think more importantly, obviously, since I'm I have an Equid T shirt on right now, is that you know you found Equid, and I know that we built a yeah. plugin for it a, a right around that time, so um, so that's really you know what has that done for you as far as where you were before, like what extra um, you know features and functionality were you able to gain by switching over to Equid. Well, uh, and this is not to bash any other card. Like I'm not, I'm no no way do I want to bash anybody else. I'm just, I'm, I want to more find out what you gained for you and your business. Yes, totally. Well, I mean, it's, it's been pretty much everything (laughs) like, um, so, you know, with finding Equid and then also listening to the podcast, I'm realizing all of these, all the stuff that I that I can add that I can that I can uh, inc- incorporate um, without me having to do any work. So I mean, I knew that I needed to do more uh, sort of like Google AdWords and stuff, and I, and I tried to do that on my own, and that was just so hard to do and try to set it up, and it was it just got really frustrating. And um, when I realized Equid had all the uh, sort of built in connections with like doing the Google shopping, uh, and on all the, the other third party apps, I, I realized, okay, this is, this is great. These are the things that I wanted to do. I didn't have the time to do them, 
I, and also just even trying to figure them out. Like, you know, I could spend a week trying to figure it out just to even set these things up. Um, but so that, you know, be, being able to do those kind of things through Equid uh, has been super helpful because it's just me running this business. I didn't have somebody else I could say, you know, go look, go check this out, figure out how to set this up. Um, it was just me and all, all I really had to do was, you know, turn a switch, yeah. put my information in there, all, you know, all the photos, all the, the, uh, the descriptions, everything is already in there that I ha- had already put in through Equid. And I, so I didn't really have to do anything else. And that's, that's made a huge difference for me with the business. All right. So you're making some more money yeah. now, getting some more traffic and sales. That's kind of the, I mean, that is yes. the goal here. <laughs> yes, definitely. Yeah. You know, and, and in, and in ways that, um, you know, as, as I listen to the podcast too, I'm sort of learning like how, what those different ways are, because before that I didn't really know, you know, I, I didn't do any business school or anything. I'm just sort of, you know, it's like, I just figuring it out as I go and, and I hear something and, you know, then you guys talk about something on a podcast. I'm like, wow, that's really interesting, you know? And, and then I can sort of hook it up in within Equid and, you know, get a free month and sort of figure out what it is and, and incorporate it. Um, and so, yeah, it's been very helpful. It's been, it's been interesting as we do this. There's been a common theme, and I'm hearing it again today. Um, we had a podcast last week, and I keep hearing the ones that are successful are the ones that first just start, right? You have to start yeah. with something, and, and you don't know all the answers. And so it helps that pretty much everything is really easy to do. And if you don't know how to do it, using Equid chat or reaching out via email to, to support is actually seems to move people forward really quickly. And, and also that a successful business owner is a, a creator and they realize it's going to take iterations and it's going to take changes and you're going to run into things where if you just give up, then who knows what could have, would have, should have been right. But yeah, but, uh, sure. you, you know, so not only, have you got to this point, but now you were saying earlier, because of now you can take all this stuff online, you're actually going to be taking a road trip. What's that? What's that all about? (laughs) Yeah. Well, um, we, we sort of talked about it a little bit, a couple years and, um, we, we just, we wanted to, we wanted to, uh, hit the road, see the United States travel around in an RV, for a year and our kids are seven and 10 and we figured, you know, we have to do it sooner than later because they'll get too old. My wife, um, is in grad school and we were, she was going to finish, she's finishing this summer and we, and then we were going to, we were going to actually do it next year, but she thought, Oh, she'll get into the workforce and then it'll make it even harder. So we thought, okay, we're going to do it this summer, uh, take off for a year, travel around the U S and, you know, we, I think we sort of finalized it, uh, last summer or early last summer. And at that point I'm like, wow, okay, now I need to figure out how, (laughs) how can we do this and how can I keep this, this business going? Um, and, uh, yeah. So, I mean, that's coming back to the, to the, to using equity. That was part of that was part of that plan. Part of being able for us to do it was to have, was to have this software, you know, which at the time I didn't realize, but I'm like, Oh yeah, of course. Like I can do all these things. I can, you know, with the app, I, the phone app, I can, I can basically run the business, um, with Equid and ShipStation on my phone. I can do all the things I need to do. Um, Oh, nice. So uh, you're actually going to be yeah. using ShipStation. You're not going to have a bunch of triangles under storage in your, <laughs> no, <that's> your- <laughs> no. Well, see, that was another part of it was, um, I originally was going to have a fulfillment center here in Seattle take care of it to ship from, you know, local. And since I, I'm not a huge company, I could, the the bigger, the bigger fulfillment companies wouldn't handle me because they, they, they send out so many things, but I found a smaller business who was willing to do it. And then I went in and talked with them. We chatted about it. I heard back from them maybe a couple of weeks later that they, after 20 years, they decided to, shut that aspect of their business down. So uh, I was like, Oh wow, now what am I going to do? Am I going to haul them all with me? That, that would just be impossible, you know, cause we could be, I don't know, at the grand Canyon for a week 
without internet connection. So uh, I actually ha- ha- found my neighbor, Yvette. I said, Yvette, do you want to ship my products for me for a whole year? <laughs> you know, she's like, yes, of course. So um, I have my neighbor. She's going to come over. And I- I'm I'm now in the middle of making all the enough products for to for for the whole year it's actually I'm sort of planning for a year and a half of of my original products the products I have a, a company back east that I wholesale to so enough for them as well and then my the, the newer product the the Grover Pro Miller machine that goes that's part of the uh, Grover Pro percussion back east I'm making enough for them as well so right now I'm just cranking out machines so everybody can have them so they can all ship them out so i don't have to think about anything really on the road just sort of monitor stuff and make sure that everything's running smoothly oh that's perfect so you yeah. put together this is like a almost like a one year plan now in order to to set the plan in place to be able to go for a year and i even heard a year and a half maybe so yeah. wow i'm i mean so first of all that's awesome i'm i'm excited yeah. <laughs> and jealous yeah. i got three little ones myself um right. i don't know if i could take all three of them in an RV, though. I don't know. No, that would be a <laughs> Maybe I'm not jealous. I don't know. <laughs> you just need a bigger RV. Okay, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but I think what a great opportunity to travel around with your family and, you know, like, yeah, when they get into high school, like, maybe they don't want to go on that trip or there's other right. things that they have, you know, sports or whatever that just – it becomes harder, I know. So yes, yeah. I think that's the right timing. And, um, and yeah, so you're setting everything up. You're getting the fulfillment set up. Um, yeah, ShipStation is actually great for, um, for fulfillment and getting all the labels printed correctly. And I, I know you can do a lot more. You can do a lot more yeah. with it. So that's, that's a great app that I know you, you're pumped about. Um, yeah. What else was I going to ask about that? So, I mean, now you got a little bit – you have a few more months now to get – um, you know, to pump up some sales a little bit. What's, you know, what do you think, what do you think you're missing? What can we help you with? <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, I, I, I did just start the Google shopping. So, and I'm actually starting to see results from that, which has been great. And then also the, the retargeting I just started. Okay. Um, one of the problems I'm having with the retargeting is, and I'm actually just going to bring it up so I can look at it. Um, so, and I don't really understand and you're, this. And are you doing retargeting? Is this through Facebook or through Google or or both? Well, it's both because it's through it's through um, Clicking, okay. right? So they're, so they're doing both. Yep. Uh, and Clicking, by the way, is awesome. Right? They've been. I mean, their their customer support has been amazing. Um, but so through my Facebook retargeting, everything's great. But but apparently through my Google retargeting, I don't have enough. I don't really understand it, but I don't have enough customers coming through Google, so they can't even set up the retargeting aspect of it right yeah. now. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, usually, uh, so because of for privacy reasons and such, they usually need 500 visitors on a page in a certain time frame. I'm going to guess oh, that's okay. probably 30 days. Don't quote me on that. But yeah. the reason is that if they only had one or two visitors. Um, you could, you know, like the ads might be kind of creepy, like, uh, hey, Billy, looks like you were on our page, you know, but if it's yeah. 500 people, they assume that's enough that it's becomes anonymous um, uh-huh. for tracking. So there is a there is a 500 visitors on a product or, or whatever page you want to retarget. Yeah. Um, so that that's probably the issue. But there's I imagine there's times where you hit over 500. So that'll that'll turn on or. We got to get you over five hundred visitors. <laughs> I know. Yeah, I, I don't think I've hit it yet because I, I even sent that's so that app is through uh, ROI Hunter. Okay, yeah. And I and I've talked to them, and yeah, and the guy basically said, um, "Oh, I just got a new order, <laughs> a new Ecuador." All right, nice. all right. There's just, a is there a the bell, dollar sign? The thing? <laughs> yeah. I just looked at my ring email. The triangle. Um, yeah, um, and he. Oh, I just lost my train of thought. But, That's all right. I do. I did like Rich's <laughs> ring the triangle comment, though. I think if you know, if there was a little triangle that dinged every time you got an order, that would be awesome. Yeah, that, yeah, that, that'd be pretty funny. <laughs> you could just just hear that in the background. Yeah. <laughs> um. But yeah, they they don't. It. I don't. I just I don't have enough people for that. So yeah, no, that, I think that, that's that, that doesn't be able to kick in. Yeah. yeah, that I mean, it's a good thing you got it set up. So if and when you ever do hit that, 
Um, it's it's called dynamic product ads, um, is or it's dynamic retargeting. There's several different names, but but yeah, that is a great thing to have set up so that if people get there, uh, you know, that's automatically going to be targeting. So so it's a good thing you got that set up. But um, but yeah, there's probably some things we could do to help get you some more traffic. I know. Um, actually, we can talk a little bit real quick on. I noticed on your website you have all these setups. So you have the, oh, yeah, you know, like, yeah. hey, here's a picture of, um, you know, what's a, what are the musicals um, that... Oh, yeah, I just had it up, too. You had like, it up there? Yeah, yeah. It, it was funny because I'd made up Mary Poppins, and then I saw you had Mary and Poppins it's, on yeah. there. I was like, oh, wow, cool. Um, yeah, it's on the right, setup right shots. The, yeah, right now at the top, I think there's some from the Broadway production of Mamma Mia uh, and, and some Mary Poppins stuff and, yeah, different shows. So this... So on my website, I also have this section of it that that's mainly just setups, setup shots, which is setup shots of different musical theater, percussion and drum setups from guys all over the world. And people, they'll use it as a resource. Let's say they're doing a production of Mamma Mia and they'll come and they can search for Mamma Mia and look at how the drummer set up. Uh, and also look at how the percussion is set up and sort of get ideas as, you know, as to what they did and how they did it. And, you know, maybe steal some things from, from, you know, this one guy. Sometimes, I mean, for like shows like Les Mis, there might be six or seven different setups on, on the, on this site. So people can sort of see how everybody did it. Cause it's the interesting thing is drummers and percussionists, even if it's the same show, they're going to all set up completely different, you know, they have different ways that they where they put their cymbals or their drums or whatever their percussion instruments. So it's kind of interesting to see how people have decided to to set to set up their uh, stuff for that particular show. So that's what that is. So that's a great great source of we'll call it free or you know semi free traffic to your site. So people will yeah. be searching for that. And yeah. then, of course, there happens to be a Miller machine there hooked up for the triangle <laughs> or the finger symbol. Right. So, you know, I yeah. mean, there's, there's a fine line on being too pushy with that. But, but yeah, I mean, that's a good source yeah. of traffic. Um, and but I think that's not, yeah. it's not a criteria, though. To, it, it never was sort of – you don't have to have a triangle machine in your setup to be on the, on the setup shots. So, Got it. So, yeah, yeah it's not, it's, it's, I'm not trying to do any kind of a hard sell with that. I, I just really like – I really enjoy sort of – taking care of, you know, putting these things up there and posting them. It's, I really enjoy that. Yeah. Well, yeah. plus it's good to just edify your industry and, and people doing good work and, you know, especially yeah. if you start sharing that via social as well too, that's a good way to draw attention to it. Who knows now, not to go too deep on it, but you might get an affiliate for selling Broadway tickets one day. <laughs> yeah, right. Something, some connection somewhere, but, but, but I mean, what, and, and what you said, uh, Richard was uh, also about, I, I do need to sort of in, somehow get these up on social media. I, I, don't, I don't do that really at all right now, but I think that would be um, a good way to, to, to get for them to be exposed because, you know, unless, if you don't go to the site, you know, there really isn't that much, much exposure of, of these things. So I've got to figure out a way to do that as well. Well, now you'll be uh, – you have this cross-country trip, right? So, right. I should, yeah. you know, you're going to be visiting uh, – I mean, I'm, I imagine it's kind of a click, the, the drummers for orchestra and, and Broadway shows, right? Like you're going to be visiting other other cities. Yes. And, yeah. Definitely. Yeah. I mean, I'll put the word out. I'll be like, hey, I'll be in your town. You know, let's – I'm going to come see your setup. I want to take photos and put it up on the website or see your show. Or, yeah. We're, I'm looking forward to that, to being able to – to see, you know, because a lot of people have bought the machine. So I, I know them, I mean, through Facebook or email, um, but it would be great to actually meet, you know, see them face to face. And Well, yeah, and I think that's a great, great opportunity to, to take those pictures and, you know, like, hey, here's, here's the drummer for this show. And, you know, it's all smiles and thumbs up and waving <laughs> at the camera. And, yeah. you know, like, and I think that's, that's, that's great. Like people will be interested in that, particularly in your market, right? Like it's not, yes. I mean, are, are me and Rich going to follow you and, and give you a little heart on every one of those? I don't know. Maybe not. But, uh, <laughs> you you <laughs> no better. Fun. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> all right. Talk to me into it. I'm a musician. I'll follow you. <laughs> okay. Okay. But yeah, you, you do that. And then the occasional shot of those would be, all right, here's the setup. And then, oh, it just so happens there's a little triangle machine right here. And now you have the opportunity for the shoppable posts. So, uh, yes. uh, so 
you know, that's and I think I earned a little intro to our podcast. So I want to I want to mention that that you know get your Facebook product catalog into uh, your Facebook Business Manager, which I think it already is if you're using ROI Hunter. So once you have that done, you can now tag that in the in those posts and you know. Yeah. So then it's mostly fun, mostly hey, here's a setup shot, here's here's us having fun at you know another, uh, another city, uh, but then occasionally you're getting a, a little bit of marketing in there to you know. Hey, you got to fund sure. this trip, right? We got to, you got to put yeah. gas in the RV. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, and you buy gas. I mean, we need gas money. Oh yeah, that, these things don't run on solar yet. You know, <laughs> sponsored by the Miller Machine. Yeah, <laughs> we'll get some Equid stickers on the back. We'll, we'll, yeah. we'll get this sponsored yeah. somehow. Yeah. <laughs> well, and definitely be taking pictures of the venues as well, right? Uh, back to the yes, th- this yeah. world. Is, you're going to. The, the ancillary benefits and some of the biggest benefits, right? I know that's a strange sentence, but it's going to be how much your children get to learn about, yes, automation is cool and yes, all this sales is cool, but it's about relationships yeah. and you building the relationships with these fellow percussionists on the road and the venues. It's, it's you know, without even trying, it's going to add more sales to your business just by, I mean, you can tell you're a good guy. You, you want to take your kids on the road and explore and adventure and, you know, teach them about other things than just, you know, two cities across the United States. Right. So right. yeah, definitely take as many pictures as you can, whether you post them right then or not, I'll, you know, be dependent upon how adventurous your travel is at the time. But, right. uh, it's, it's a lot better to have those photos and post them at a later date than it is to to not have the photos. I mean, you're yeah. going to have a lot of windshield time here, too. So I, I think, you know, like, hey, um, you know, maybe the wife drives for a couple hours and you get get the thumbs going on Instagram and, and Facebook yeah. and, you know, post some photos. And, you know, like that's sharing sharing the adventure. But it's also it's, you know, the Miller Machines is on the road. And, and I think yeah. it would be, be very interesting content. Or put the kids to work. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. yeah. 10 years old, you know, that's old enough. Yeah. That might be Money. more social savvy than, yeah. uh, <laughs> than, than me you already. even might want him to be. <laughs> yeah, get him on no, t- like Okay, that. you get him on TikTok. Yeah. I think that's the new, uh, that's uh, that's where the kids are on now. I don't uh, know. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I don't know anything about that. So uh, like me that. neither, really. I'll be <laughs> honest with you. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> He's, he saw it in a blog post. Yeah, 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 yeah. I've, I've, I've heard. <laughs> I've heard that's what the kids are right. doing, but uh, right. yeah, <laughs> I don't know if we can do shoppable posts in TikTok yet. So don't let's. I don't know. <laughs> well, you know, if, if Equid can figure it out, then it, it'll happen, right? All right. Well, <laughs> all right. I'll I'll talk to product. We'll see what we can do for TikTok here. But um, but yeah, that so that's great. I mean, I'm I'm pumped about you, this trip you guys have coming up. Uh, I'm actually glad that we got to meet a, our, our first super fan for the, the podcast ah, as well. <laughs> I can I, I imagine lots of other people are listening to all the, all the podcasts, you know, they have to be right. Cause it, there's so much it's, I mean, if you're on Equid, it's, it's really very helpful to listen to all that stuff. Well, they should be, <laughs> we'll make a, we'll make a clip out of that and uh, put it yeah. on Instagram for you. Well, and yeah. we and we don't know. That's one of the hardest parts about podcasting, and we'll kind of put that out to any other podcast, or excuse me, podcast listeners that uh, that enjoy the show. If you have a desire to get on the show, or you just want to let us know that you like what's going on, or you want to cover a particular thing, you can go to equid dot com forward slash podcast and go to the bottom of the form and. Fill out a form. Is that actually what you did too, Billy? I can't remember how we. Yeah, got. yeah, awesome. It was. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So it, I, I, can't, I can't remember where. I, well, it was just. It was on one of the podcasts. I'm like, oh wow, I should do that. All right. So uh, all these little times when we tell people to go rate and review and go to equid.com forward slash podcast, you did it. So yes. we're not wasting our I, breath here. I, that's I know, good. Right? And, here, and here I am talking to you guys. I mean, come on. <laughs> well, that's awesome. And we're going to spread the word about the Miller machines and, uh, yeah. you know, putting gas in your RV the rest of the, <laughs> for the next year and a half. So yeah. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. Well, now when you're, when you're on this journey for the next year, is there uh, one place in particular that people could uh, follow the, follow the journey or, you know, where, where would you want people to go to, to find out more about you? in the business. Um, yeah, I, 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 probably my Facebook page would be the best one. It's, it's just that, that it's at the Miller machine. 
Um, I have a, an Instagram page, but I, I haven't done a lot with that yet. I plan to, uh, or just, or I guess the website, I mean, the setup shots will probably sort of reflect where we are as well. If there's setup shots from around the country, but probably just Facebook. Okay. Facebook, and we're going to – I'm also – because I was at Social Media Marketing World, uh, the conference, I'm going to encourage you to uh, build your Instagram profile. That's the yeah. – in, Instagram's the, the action right now. So uh, consider yeah. that a nudge, a push, yeah. whatever it takes. And, 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 it, and, it, and it's, it's perfect for me. That's the thing. It's, you know, because especially if I, if I use the setup shots with it because it's all very sort of you know, image-based. And I, and I know that. And I think that's, that's one of the things I'm looking forward to on the trip is to devote more time to that, to, yeah. to doing stuff on, on Instagram. Yeah, yeah. you def- definitely should. And get, get your uh, selfie arm ready, you know, do some workouts. <laughs> yeah. So you got to hold that phone out as far as you can, click the video and do a lot of 15 second videos. So, yeah. uh, yeah. you know, that's, I don't know what else to say. You just, you have to do it. <laughs> You're talking about for the stories, right? Yeah. For the stories. Yeah. yeah. So those little short little videos for, for Instagram, yeah. I think would be very powerful. Um, yeah. you, you know, for you, especially as you're kind of have a, there's like a, it's a, it's a year long trip. So, um, yeah. you get to do, do that in every city that you, that you want right. to. So, right. Sure. Yeah. Awesome. Well, um, you know, at rich, any last questions here? No, I would. I just want to say congratulations, mostly on getting started and not letting anything stop you. Continue to create and iterate and automate and whatever it <laughs> takes to get your business yeah. going. And also, as two dads here, you know, thanks for including your family and not making it only be about the business, but not leaving the business behind. It's a it's a beautiful mix, yeah. and we appreciate it. Yeah, great. Yeah, it, it's it's not easy, but it, I mean, it's you know, it's I enjoy it. <laughs> oh, that's right. that's great to hear. Well, Billy, safe travels, Billy. Really thank appreciate you guys. it. Guys, great talking with you. Thank you. Well, Rich, there's another great show. And when you add it all together with the other shows, you won't miss any strategies or new tactics on how to grow your online business. So to make sure you don't miss anything, subscribe on your favorite podcast player. Rich, what player do you like? Uh, Probably Stitcher. All right. How about you? I'm, I'm an Apple podcast guy. I'm an Apple guy on that. Yeah. And we're growing right now. A listener asked us to add Google Play as a platform. So we just added that a couple weeks ago. We have Spotify, SoundCloud. Nice. We're everywhere. So subscribe on your favorite platform and don't forget to rate and review us. So we know what you think. Yeah, rate how we're doing, review on what we have done, tell us topics you'd like us to cover, uh, tell us if you think we're great and you uh, are going to take over the world. Subscribe, rate, and review. It's the only way we'll know and it keeps the shows coming. Thanks, everybody.